Well, hello everybody. Here we are in week five, module five of our accounting course for summer 23. Hey, I think I've got all the grading updated. I was out of the office last week, so I apologize for that delay. Um, I know that uh, you know some of you have been waiting on some grades, so I appreciate your patience there. But everything is up to date as of uh, right now um, at four o'clock in the afternoon on Thursday. So we should be all updated uh, at this point. If you see anything missing, let me know. And also remember, if uh, you do have any late work, if I see there's nothing in that Dropbox, I'll put a single point value in there. It doesn't mean that's what you earned. It just says, hey, you know, turn this in. And then once I see it's been submitted, I'll go in and grade that for points. Again, there's always a little deduction on points for late work in most cases, but you don't want a zero uh, because that really hurts and uh, that can bring you down to a, a letter grade that you may not like. So, um, all right, so that takes care of all of our grading stuff. Um, also, let me talk about uh, the midterm. So uh, I read um, all of your progress journals. I know there were some, uh, there were a few comments about the midterm, but it was difficult and uh, you know, a lot of, I guess, um, anxiety over, over that midterm. Um, I, the, overall, the grades were great. I mean, kind of like pretty much where I like to see them uh, at this point in the course. The average was 91.4%. So pretty good, you know, and I know, again, that's the average, but that's, you know, I, I look for that. I look for some outliers. I look for um, if there's any questions that are just, everybody's missing them and there's really nothing that's stuck out um, and the again the course average is looking uh, really nice uh, you know right at that almost that a level you know which is technically a 92 but we're almost you know at an a um, so that looks uh, that looks really good for the midterm um, also there was the uh, the quiz where you know we had some more in-depth, I guess, math type stuff. And what I would encourage you to do, if you look at it and you wonder like, why did I get some points off? Well, it's almost always because you're not showing work. Um, for those of you that showed work and I'm like, I'm looking at it going, okay, they gave it a try. They were doing a, they're doing break even, but you know, the answers, the numbers aren't right. You know, you're going to get most of the points, if not all of them. For those questions for folks that may have the right answer and they put it in there uh, but there's no work to show me or no rationale because that's what it says is show, show work and rationale um, you know you're gonna get some you know you'll get some point deductions so um, if we have other quizzes like that and I think we might be one more um, or at any time where it says show your work make sure that you're gonna show on that work putting that rationale in there I know I had one student was really uh, nervous and you know, and but she wrote a lot of rationale about about the problem, and uh, you know she got all the points for it, even though the answer wasn't correct. You know there was a lot of narrative that went along with it, and I could see that yeah, she, you know this student's trying; they're trying to apply the concepts. They know what the concepts are. You know, yeah. So, um, but when you don't give me anything, you know, it's it's kind of tough. So, uh, if you weren't happy about those quiz grades, I gave that. I think that was quiz four. Um, for some of you folks, it's, it's usually a work issue. So make, so make sure you show, uh, show your work on that. Um, okay, so let's talk also about the case study that is due at the end of this week. Some of them have already been turned in early, so great job. And um, the ones I've graded so far are fantastic. Perfect. Exactly what we're looking for. Uh, but you may be saying, Chris, so what are you looking for? Well, read the, read the instructions. <laughs> if you read the instructions, you're almost guaranteed to do well, okay? It's really that easy. It really is that easy. So in the case of um, the, and I know I've, I've talked to some students um, through text and on the phone about the case study that the, um, it says full paragraph answers. So just do your analysis the best you can, you know, statement of cash flows. You know, if you have to go back and look at that, Google it or remember, go back to the textbook and then kind of pull in some of that information from the case study you know, what those mean. And you put that, you know, that's easily a paragraph. Okay. And not a, not a couple sentences, you know, you want a nice full paragraph, you know, that's usually a minimum of three sentences. 
Um, but kind of that sweet spot is sort of five, five, you know, kind of the sweet spots. You can do it in three sometimes, but um, especially for those answers, uh, I, you know, if it was me, I would always shoot for five because then I know I'm going to be solid. Kind of an intro sentence, kind of a conclusion sentence, and then some, you know, some, some meat in between. And I know I'm going to be fine. Uh, at least I think I'm going to give it my good effort on that. So make sure you're you're doing a, you know you're doing that full paragraph in there. You're pulling those terms that we've learned. So one student asked me, "Are you looking for definitions?" Yeah, I'm looking for terms that you know how to somewhat speak the language a bit. You know that you have some knowledge of you know what is a statement of like cash flows or income statement, balance sheet. Um, you know any of these things that, that that you know what these mean and you're applying you're you're using the language correctly. Um, I know that there was another student who in the, um, progress journal said this, there's so much terms. It's like learning a new language. It is, it is totally like that. We don't use this stuff in normal everyday, you know, interactions with people. So there is a lot of terminology here, but there's probably, I don't know, maybe 20 words that you should have in your back pocket, you know, as a manager, as a supervisor, as someone who's going to be dealing in the realm of administration and business, there's probably a small handful of accounting terms you want to really know what they mean. So amateurization, depreciation, uh, the financial statements that we've talked about, that would be mission accomplished if after this class is over and you went away with those, you know, whatever those might think, about 20 to probably cover it, about 20, 20 key uh, accounting terms. Um, that would that would serve you very uh, very well. But anyhow, that's what we're looking for on the um, on the case study. Just make sure you have nice full paragraphs that are that make sense, and and then you'll be fine. Um, let's see what else do we have this week. Let's see. It's Thursday. The week's mostly over for us, but we have a somewhat light module because I know you guys do have that case study uh, learning activity, and this one is a, another written narrative. Let me remove my picture altogether. Um, so with this one, again, cost allocation, you're doing, you know, that, that paper. Make sure you have about two pages. Um, the, you know, those folks that got points off, if you're only giving me one page, double-spaced, 14-point font, <laughs> I, I know the trick about font. I mean, everybody knows that. You know, have about 12-point font, normal, you know, and, and, and two pages, okay? And make sure... Um, in-text citations are used. Uh, again, I had a, a conversation with a student. They're worried about, you know, um, citations. And um, it kind of, I'll give you a secret. Here's this, here's a secret. So as we're grading things, as, as any of your instructors grade stuff, you know, we do these kind of these, we'll do a first pass, you know, we'll like scan, like what what's coming out, what's sticking out to me. So if I scan that paper and I don't see any in-text citations, or if I'm seeing maybe one uh, per paragraph, I know there's that that we're already going down that route because you um, you're going to use an in-text citation anytime that you're using something that's not common knowledge, and at this case and at this level, um, you know, in a baccalaureate program. Most of this stuff is not common knowledge. If you were doing your doctorate of business, you don't have to cite what a balance sheet is. But in this case, uh, you know, you're going to be citing anything that you don't know what it is that you had to look up, Google, look up, textbook, whatever, you're going to have to cite that. So make sure that you have enough citations um, through, uh, throughout, the, throughout the paper. And uh, Again, you're, and again, I think we have two, um, usually have two uh, references. Yes, a minimum of two references. So that's one is the textbook and one is something else. It could be two textbooks. I don't care. You know, you could have one accounting textbook, that one that we're using, the accounting and finance textbook, then you could have a regular, you could find one out on the internet. You know, there's, there's a lot of open source uh, accounting textbooks out there that you could use and use those, are, those are your, your two sources. But whatever, make sure you have your minimum, your minimum sources and, Again, you have about two full pages there. It should be very easy to, to do that with um, cost allocation methods. And then the other thing I have in here is about a fair warning where um, this paper, really anything, well, anything you turn in at the college can be submitted to turnitin.com. Um, the, um, and, and what, 
if you're not familiar with Turnitin.com, it's actually a very useful tool. Um, it will uh, it can show if there's any um, similarity out there. Like if, if you've taken something off the internet or or what have you, um, it will find it is very good. <laughs> I will say that, and it will find uh, the similarity. Um, not saying it's plagiarism. I always use it as a tool for students. Like, hey, look, here's something that's you know matching from another source. Just make sure that you reword this. That's the key. That's the key, guys. Put it in your own words. Just rephrase it in your own words. And I'm also going to take a couple seconds <laughs> to talk about something that um, I truly think is the greatest technological advancement I've seen in my lifetime. Uh, that I, <laughs> the greatest technological advancement. Let me back up. So I'm I'm 56 years old. So I've been there through basically the entire consumer electronic, you know, revolution. You know, from the very beginning of, you know, computers coming into the home, I had one and been there. And obviously they've evolved into these great machines. And, and you know, from what I first had back in the mid 80s to what I have in my pocket right now doesn't even compare. But that was an evolutionary process. Very fast, but it was an evolutionary process. What's happened over the past 12 months has been uh, pretty astounding. And that's with chat GPT. Um, and, uh, I think it is one of the greatest tools I've ever seen, um, period. <laughs> it's just amazing. Um, and, uh, you know, this course won't really address that, but I'm going to be bringing that into another course that I teach that we're going to integrate it with evidence-based decision-making and, um, decision-making and using AI tools. But that's another another class. But I guess the one thing I want to say is ChatGPT is amazing and it's going to change uh, the work environment greatly. So become familiar with it. And if you are already familiar with it and are using it, know that Turnitin.com can now detect AI. Uh, it does a pretty good job at detecting the general output. I'll be very careful here about it. <laughs> Detecting the uh, general output of uh, GPT 3.5 and 4, okay? And I'll just leave it like that, okay? Because it's, it's, it's a relatively new feature. So if you have been using chat GPT for any of your assignments, um, uh, I would recommend that you do not use the unaltered output that comes from chat GPT, okay? Because it will be detected in the plagiarism checker. Um, but that doesn't mean I'm anti chat GPT. Again, I think it's, it is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. <laughs> it is blows my, if you don't know what it is, watch YouTube videos, pour yourself into it, learn it. Um, it will be eventually integrated in Microsoft word and all the office products is, uh, what I've seen is going to be integrated into those products. So soon it's going to be mainstream. I mean, it's already mainstream now, but it's going to be like common everyday thing. When, it, when they put chat GPT into Word, uh, then it's no longer something that just nerds are using. Uh, it is going to be everybody's going to use it. Um, the largest investor in open AI, which is chat GPT, is Microsoft. And the name of the product will be, they're saying it's going to be called Copilot, and it will be integrated right into that. So the future is happening. That's probably, who knows, maybe a few months away before that release happens. But um, definitely um, start learning about ChatGPT and prompt engineering. Okay, I've been on my soapbox on that way too long because I do think it's an amazing tool. But be careful in using that in any of your classes at the college in a pure, unaltered format that's being produced by coordinating with any AI. Okay, so there we go. Um, I think I said that probably if you pick apart the words. Uh, so there you go. All right, so we have that. Um, again, I think, again, just read the assignment, do the, follow the instructions, and everybody will be fine, and you'll get the, you'll get the full points. All right, I think, uh, let me check my notes here. I think that covers 
everything I wanted to talk about uh, for this kind of week coming in late here, but I think we're finally caught up with everything. Again, if you guys have any questions, you can text me, you can email, best ways to get a hold of me. Obviously, I'm shooting this from my home office today. Um, but um, again, let me know if you guys have uh, any issues. But oh, and just one other word. I know some of you are worried about points and, and, being, and doing well in the class. Uh, we do have some extra credit available coming up, I think, in the next module. Uh, you'll definitely have it before the end of the class. So if you do feel like you need a few extra points, if you're on the on the cusp of, you know, uh, if your B is a little, uh, you know, just on the cusp of an A, you might want to do that. So up to you. But it, it will be there if you if you need that. And for those late work folks, get that stuff in. So, you know, I don't have to, I don't like giving anything below a C. So I, I hate doing that. Um, so make sure you get all, all of your work in and do your best effort. I know you guys will do fine. All right, I'll check in with you next week. Have a good one.